You have to change your suit. Because I'll still look like a penguin after I change. <laughs> but you look stunning. You look absolutely stunning. Thank you very much. You can much. wear anything. You can wear you anything. You know what? Thank you very much to MOEP for this wonderful gown. And also, Habit Jewels. Yes, keep stroking that hair. I because, know. Because I like the sparkles coming into my auric field. I know, so yeah. it makes you look good. Yeah, I feel good. <laughs> okay. That's right. And for those of you who don't know, we're going to literally invite the top 18 finalists back on stage, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. Guess what? I have in my hand the top 10 list is on my hand already. But before we can announce that, we're going to invite the top 18 finalists back on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, the top 18 finalists of Miss Universe Malaysia 2019. Let's give them a round of applause. And for those of you who don't know, the Miss Universe Malaysia 2019 audition started back in June 2018 with a nationwide search and selected candidates from hundreds of hopefuls. We later narrowed it down to 24 candidates before finally selecting the 18 finalists standing before you tonight. And I'm pleased to announce that I have opened the envelope and I now have in my hand the results of the top 10 finalists. And in no particular order, we will reveal one by one. So they will be one step closer to becoming the next Miss Universe Malaysia 2019. Okay. Andrea, would you do us the honors? First? I will do that, please. The first girl. Let's build up that tension now. The first girl make it to the top ten is Nikita! Our next contestant making into the top 10 is Shweta. Who's the third girl to the top 10? Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Suli. And the fourth contestant making it to the top 10 is Nisha. Halfway there, almost there. The next girl is Frost. Thirteen more lovely ladies waiting for their names to be called, but only five will make it through. The next lucky finalist coming into the top ten is Rebecca Tan. It's getting really narrow. The seventh girl in our top ten is Rishon. Lucky number eight goes to Tess. Number nine, two spots left, ladies and gentlemen. Tanusha! And the final spot goes to Christine. Thank you very much. Congratulations to our top 10 finest, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, ladies. Thank you, ladies. It's been a great journey for each and every one of them, making it all the way here. 
Now the top 10 will continue on to compete for the title Miss Universe Malaysia 2019. I hope you girls are ready for the next round. Are you ready? Oh yeah, things are heating up now because we are just moments or hours away. A couple of hours away from revealing our winner. But first, we want to get to know them a little bit better, don't you? I think I do. You know uh, what? It's not just about the looks. Of course it's, it's not. It's not just about I the looks. I think we've emphasized that throughout the entire night. But it's important for me as a woman to emphasize again... Please continue to preach. That it's not just about the looks. It's about who the woman is inside. Is she going to represent Malaysian hospitality? Is she going to represent our country in the way that it deserves to be on the international level, Hanson? I completely agree and I fully support that mission. <laughs> and that is why we're asking our top 10 finalists to select questions from this plate to be asked for you, ladies and gentlemen, and more importantly for our judges, to have a peek. That's right. So very simple mechanics. So ladies, you will step forward when I call your name, pick out an envelope, hand it to us, and we'll ask you the question. You will have your time to say your answer to all of us. And of course, to the viewers at home. Clear? Okay, let's all begin. Right. We so will begin with Nikita. Okay. Nikita's question. This is your question. How does social media change the way view, we view each other? How does social media change the way we view each other? Thank you for the question. I feel that social media has been slightly superficial because people pretend to be someone that they're not. And because of that, I encourage everyone to be their truest selves because when you are your truest self, people get to be and also want to be their truest selves and form of themselves online. So when you are your truest self, you get to... Sorry. When you are your truest self, you get to show them who you really are online and not hide anything. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nikita. The nerves might have gotten to her a little bit, but she composed herself Listen, and followed was, with a very good answer. It was pretty real. It's pretty legit. Hashtag real talk. Absolutely. Next up, can we invite Shweta? Thank you, Shweta. What a gentleman. All right. Similar train of thought. Shweta, how do you deal with social media trolls that body shame online? I will repeat. How do you deal with social media trolls that body shame online? Thank you for the question. Good evening, Malaysia. Social media trolls about body shaming is very rapid and it's happening all around the world, including in our very own country. I would say do not take it to your heart. Accept your flaws because there is no such thing as body shaming. Your curves are perfectly fine, but do not go obese because that's not healthy. So people out there, let's all stay healthy and wealthy together. Thank you. Thank you, Shrita, for the empowering answer. Absolutely. Next, can we have Suli? Suli, please take an envelope. Okay, Suli. Who do you regard as the most influential person in your life? Who do you regard as the most influential person in your life. Thank you for the question. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The most influential person in my life is my basketball teacher in primary school. His tough love has equipped me with the skills to strive and thrive in today's world. 
He has inspired me in so many ways, and one of the ways is to give back what I'm given, and that is to be a teacher one day. Thank you. What an honest answer. As my teacher once said, a little discipline never hurt nobody. Thank you so much, Suli, for that answer. My teacher said, a little of a conversation, a little more mention, please. <laughs> <laughs> Can we welcome next, Nisha. Nisha, what advice would you give to a child who is being bullied at school? I repeat, what advice would you give a child who is being bullied at school? Thank you for the question. So I would advise the children that is being bullied at school to act brave, walk away and stand up for yourself. Firmly and clearly stop bully and walk away. And also to always talk to your parents or anyone so that you would feel less, you would feel much confident in yourself. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Nisha. Nisha. As we mentioned, these uh, questions are not easy questions and I think every one of them have been handling very well so far. Uh, they've not seen it before. Next we have Frost. What is the single biggest lesson you have learned in your life? I repeat, what is the single biggest lesson you have learned in your life? Thank you for the questions. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The single biggest lesson I have learned in my life must be I need to always believe in myself. Long ago, I used to doubt myself. I always think that I'm not good enough. I've achieved a high, I'm always a high achiever in school. 6 a in UPSR, 8 a in PMR, 11 a in SPM, 3.75 in SDPM, but it's not enough for me. And I'm also a double major in finance and economics. But it doesn't matter to me. I'm always hungry for more. And I felt in depression. And one day I wake up and realize I could be so much productive if I never ever doubt myself. And then I stand back and fight and chew. And today I'm here, I'm different. I, I'm here to achieve my own. When I was 19, I told my mom, I want to join Miss Universe Malaysia, but I do not have the courage to do so. But I'm really happy that I had the courage to achieve it today. Thank you. Well done, Frost. Wow. Thank you very much, Frost. I think it's safe to say she's a high achiever. Look, I couldn't do that being a scuba diver. I wouldn't have been able to. <gasps> Up next, ladies and gentlemen, Rebecca Tan. Take a question, Rebecca. Thank you. Rebecca, should you win tonight, how would you like to be remembered at the end of your reign? I repeat, should you win tonight, how would you like to be remembered at the end of your reign? Thank you for the question. Hello, everyone. I would like everyone to remember my smile, my confidence, and the way I shine in my own way. Because this doesn't come easy. Rashawn, if you were the Prime Minister of Malaysia, what is the first thing you would do? 
Hypothetically speaking, <laughs> if you were the Prime Minister of Malaysia, what is the first thing you would do? Thank you for the questions. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. If I were the Prime Minister of Malaysia, I would make sure everyone understands about domestic violence. Because nobody in Malaysia actually acknowledges domestic abuse. They allow women to be stepped on and they think women are just minors. We are not. We are strong and we can empower and change the world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vishan. I think a women's party is coming up very soon. Up next, we'd like to invite Tess. Take a question. Tess. How can we protect women and children from the dangers of online predators? I repeat, how can we protect women and children from the dangers of online predators? Thank you for that question. Hello, Malaysia. The first thing that we need to understand about online predators is that they prey on people that they think are weak. As such, it's important then that we equip our women and children with knowledge that will be able to protect themselves. This means they need to be able to recognize boundaries. They need to be able to recognize grooming. They need to be able to recognize when someone is predating on them. Asian culture means we are not aware because whenever someone approaches us, we become very nice and we think that we deserve whatever that is happening to us. For all those reasons, we need better education prevent grooming from happening to women and children. Thank you. Wow, she's definitely given some serious thought about this issue. The question only just came to her. We are down to our last two, ladies and gentlemen. Can we have Tanusha? Okay, Tanusha, how can we minimize teenage pregnancies which may lead to baby dumping? How can we minimize teenage pregnancies which may lead to baby dumping? Good evening, everyone. Thank you for the question. I think one of the biggest reasons why we have teenage pregnancy in Malaysia is because we do not have sex education in our education system. And as Miss Universe Malaysia 2019, I will use my platform and advocate that we should, we should add ed sex education in our education system. And at the same time, uh, I will also partner up with NGOs like Women's Aid Organization and provide medical and financial aid to these young mothers so we can avoid baby dumping. And at the same time, lastly, we should also have more baby hatch centers so that women are uh, able to uh, uh, confidently go and get proper uh, treatment and uh, care for their babies. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We, it is 2019, Andrea, so is. sex is no longer a taboo subject. No, it isn't. And the, what, the first thing to equality is a woman having the same rights as a man, which is having the decision to have a baby or not. Of course. Now, our last contestant. Sorry, I'm just putting my own political agenda <laughs> in right there. Our last but not least contestant on the top 10 is Christine. Christine. What do you say to people who believe pageants like ours are not relevant in today's day and age? I repeat, what do you say to people who believe that pageants like ours are not relevant in today's day and age? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the question. So I'd like to say that pageant from, beauty pageant for me is a platform for me to show 
my potential and my my potential and my my potential and my personality and also it's a platform for me to spread and to share awareness about what's happening recently in Malaysia so I believe this is a platform a best platform for me to show my potential my confidence and everything thank you so I believe this is a really, really good beauty pageant for social media. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much, you very Christine. Thank you very much, Christine. Ladies and gentlemen, please give another round of applause for our top 10 finalists. It's important you got to know them a bit better. Definitely. You know, in this sort of setting, the nerves will definitely get to you. But I have to say, on average, everyone did really, really well. You should be very proud of yourselves, girls. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, ladies. Another round of applause for our top 10 finest, ladies and gentlemen. One step closer to becoming the next Miss Universe Malaysia 2019. I don't think some some presidents of the world could answer those questions as well. Just